What up guys? Hi, welcome to the Shoestring Congress. Today we have a video from me and Cecilia, so be sure to check hers out as well. I will put it here in the video, and I, I probably won't put it in the description because I'm lazy. This is based on Dave's video yesterday which said that if you're teaching a class on yourself, what forms of anything, books, movies, whatever, would you have your students read or watch so that they would learn more about you? I made a list. Let's jump right into it. For movies, movies are like a huge part of my life. It's what I want to do for the rest of my life is make movies. Movies are just like, ugh, watching them, dissecting them, and thinking about them, and like watching these characters, and blah, 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 storytelling is like my life. Okay, so, let's dive into movies real quick. I got three, just off the top of my head, that are good, just for like the general movie category. Now, coming up later, I have a humor category, because a sense of humor is like a big part of who I am, so there are some movies in there, um, but I'm going to keep those separate, because they're not the same thing, really. Um, the first movie on this list is Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction changed the way I thought about storytelling. Like, forever. Like, the whole non-linear aspect, just telling stories in, like, this order that would just be more interesting. Oh! So good. Just, like, the way it was written out and everything, and, like, there's a lot of humor in that, too, which I like. And just, like, the way of thinking that these people have and everything. Tarantino's definitely a great filmmaker. That's not the question here uh, at all. That's not even at question ever. Um, and Pulp Fiction is one of his greatest works probably ever. I don't think he'll ever beat Pulp Fiction. Um, but yeah, it definitely changed the way I thought uh, thought about storytelling in general. Next on the list is Blade Runner, which uh, changed... For me, it changed what movies could be. You know, Blade Runner was like... It was like a revelation. I saw that movie and I'm like, damn! Pretty much just like changed like visually everything I thought that a movie could be. From a visual standpoint. I just had no idea movies could be that cool looking. Blade Runner's, in my opinion, humble as it may be, is the greatest looking movie of all time. Just the most well shot, lit movie ever. I think it's fantastic. Blade Runner's so good. Just all the colors and the, the darkness and the depth of field. This makes me kind of like choke a little bit thinking about it. The last movie I have on here, of course, is Star Wars. Because when I saw that movie, it just like opened my mind to like, there are so many things that I can think of and that they become, they can just become real just because I'm thinking of it. And I can just like write them down and they become the story. Like Star Wars sort of changed the game for me with that because... A lot of other movies that I was watching as a kid, they're all, like, based on something, or they were, like, with teddy bears were in them, or something like that, you know? Like, around the same time I saw Star Wars, I saw, um, um, I saw, like, The Patriot, Braveheart, um, movies like that, where they're based on historical events, uh, or they're, you know, even if it's not based on a true story, it's still based on a true story, you know? Like, anything from, like, present day or from, like, the past is based on something real. But Star Wars, just, like, just, oh, my God, it was just all these stories that are just, oh, it was based on, like, the, the, the human portion was based in reality, but everything else was just, like, just make it up, just create it. And I'm like, that is awesome. I never thought of that. So that was cool. Um, let's move on to books. One of my, pretty much my favorite book ever is The Giver, and it's on this list. The Giver, um, I wrote here, allows me to appreciate every moment of my life, even the small ones, and especially the bad ones. If you haven't read The Giver, please read it. It's very good. It's short. It's a good read. It's made for, it's written for children, so you'll get through it easily. Um, and it's basically... I don't, I, don't, I don't think I can even get into it, but the main character, Jonas, he can... Um, you know, he gains an appreciation for he's like he's like deprived of uh, senses, like smells, colors, tastes, emotions, stuff like that. And then he slowly starts to, you know, 
get them and appreciate them. And it really opened my eyes to like, wow, how lucky are we that we get to like see things in color and like have things that make us laugh and cry and yeah, even fall down and feel pain because it's part of being a human. It's part of like being alive and being real. And that book really, I mean, I read it as a kid and I was like, holy shit. I mean, I've seen the sky before, but I've never looked at the sky, and it was just like, damn, that's a sky right now. And so that really helped me. That's a huge part of who I am, because I really appreciate just every little, well, not every little thing, but I try to appreciate every little thing. And every now and again, I will appreciate one of those small things, and I'll just go nuts. And it's, it's amazing, and I love it. The other book on here is Watchmen by Alan Moore. It's a graphic novel, so a lot of people are like, oh god, it doesn't count, but it fucking does, because you know how many words are in this book? A lot. Tons of words. And that really um, opened my eyes to maybe the greater good isn't the best thing. Also, that we shouldn't just trust the people that are in charge of us, the people that are supposed to be keeping watch over us, because they're human too, you know? And if we're all fuck-ups, you know, they're all fuck-ups. And if they're in charge of all of us, then they're going to fuck it up. Um, not saying that you shouldn't trust people, but just saying that, you know, be careful. You know, be careful who is in charge of you. Uh, presidents, leaders, stuff like that. Don't just take them for granted, you know, actually, like, what is happening with them? So that, the Watchmen did that for me. Um... Now we're on to the humor section. As I said earlier, humor is a huge part of my life. Here are some things that have influenced it. The Emperor's New Groove. That movie is flat out hilarious. Every second is funny. I have so many mannerisms <laughs> that I've picked up from that movie. Like, <clears throat> and like, you know, different, different stuff like that. Um, that movie is just amazing. It's like, it's one of my rainy day movies. Um, and I just think it's, it's just so funny. And, yeah, that's all pretty much it. But that night, The Roxbury is next. It's an SNL uh, movie, branched off a sketch they did called A Night at the Roxbury with Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan. And also in the sketch was J Jim Carrey, but he wasn't in the movie. And the movie, that was just so good. I mean, if you haven't seen it, do it. It's just so funny. I think it's hilarious to the walls, to the balls and the walls. Um, next, this is not a movie, I mean, it is a movie, but I'm not talking about the movie. I mean, I guess I can talk about the movie, but I'm more talking about the books, and that is Scott Pilgrim. The humor in Scott Pilgrim is, like, very, very defining of the humor that I have in my life. Um, it's just, it's, <laughs> uh, that's all. If you haven't read, if you've seen Scott Pilgrim, you, you'll get it a little bit, probably. But if you've read Scott Pilgrim, you know exactly what I'm talking about, more or less. I mean, you, you know that. Oh, well, maybe you don't. If you haven't read Scott Pilgrim, do it. Um, it's only six books. All right, they're comics, so it's really easy to get through. I can read one of them in like uh, an hour, half an hour, maybe, depending on which one it is. It's very good. Next, I have television. These television shows that either I watched when I was a kid, growing up, that really sculpted my imagination, and thus where I am right now. Or shows that I now appreciate a lot. One of them, when I was really when I was really young, I watched Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, and Cowboy Bebop. Those three shows taught me about like honor, I guess, and like justice and like God. I mean, they're all Japanese shows, so they all have this sense of like honor sort of built into it because it's a really big Japanese motif. But, uh, they they were so good. They taught me so much. Sacrifice and, like, what comes with, like, power that you have and just stuff like that. Um, a show that I'm um, getting in, well, not getting into now, but a show that, you know, is airing now and that I really love is Supernatural. Um, basically, it's just a story about two brothers. And I have a brother. Hello, Tyler. I love you. And um, and he's the best. And when I watch that show, it, I mean, it does make me think of him, but it helps me appreciate um, how much brothers mean to one another. And it's really cool. 
I love that show. Uh, other shows that are noteworthy are MASH. Um, the comedy and the drama on that is amazing. Um, I, actually, I actually was just thinking that Scrubs is like a modern day MASH, if you will. Just like the humor in it and then also the drama aspect and also that they're both about medicine, more or less. And um, that's about it. That's all I prepared. That's just like a quick list of things. Um, so yeah, if you're in a class about me, you would watch Pulp Fiction, Blade Runner, Star Wars, The Emperor's New Groove, Night of the Roxbury, uh, Supernatural, Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, and uh, Cowboy Bebop. And you would read The Giver, Watchmen, and Scott Pilgrim. Alright, that's about it. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Uh, stay tuned for more um, discussions, I guess. And I'll talk to you later.